Hi, I'm Joachim for Statistics Globe and in this video I'll explain how to set the column names of a data frame when using the CBind function. In the video I'm going to show you two examples and both of these examples are based on the vectors that we can create with lines 2 to 6 of the code. So in line 2 of the code I'm creating the first vector object which is called a vec1. So if you run this line of code you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new vector object called a vec1 appears. And we can print this vector object to the RStudio console by running line 3 of the code. And then you can see that our first vector contains of the letters C, D, E, F, G. And then in line 5 of the code I'm creating another vector object which is called a vec2. So if you run this line of code another object appears at the top right. And we can print the second vector by running line 6 of the code. And then you can see that our second vector contains a range of numeric values ranging from 8 to 4. Now if we cbind this data using the cbind function, as you can see in line 8 of the code, a new data set is created, which is called data1, and we can print this data set to the RStudio console by running line 9 of the code, and then you can see that our data has the column names vec1 and vec2, so in other words the names of the columns are the same as the names of our vector objects. However, if we want to change these column names, we can use the call names function, as you can see in line 11 of the code. And in this line of code, I'm applying the call names function to our new data matrix that we have created before. And then I'm assigning to this a vector of character strings, and this vector of character strings contains our new column names. So in this case, since our data set has two columns, I'm specifying two column names for our data set, so the first column will be called call1 and the second column will be called call2. So if you run line 11 of the code, our data matrix is updated and we can see that by printing our data matrix once again to the RStudio console by running line 12 of the code and after running this line of code, you can see that the new column names of our data set are call1 and call2. However, as you have seen in this first example, we had to use the call names function to modify our dataset after creating it with the CBind function. And in the next example, I want to show you how to change the column names already when creating the dataset using the CBind function. And this second example starts at line 14 of the code. And in this line of code, I'm again applying the CBind function. However, this time I'm specifying the name of the column and I set this name of the column to be equal to the vector that I want to use in this column. So the first column in this case should be called x1 and should contain the values of the vector 1 and the second column should be called x2 and should contain the values stored in the vector vec2. So if you run line 14 of the code, another data matrix is appearing at the top right of RStudio which is called data2 and we can print this matrix to the RStudio console by running line 15 of the code and then you can see that we have created another data matrix which contains the column names x1 and x2. So in this video I have explained how to set the column names of a data matrix when using the cbind function. However, in case you want to learn more on this topic, you could check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on the homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail and I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video. Furthermore, if you have liked this video, I would be very happy if you leave me some positive feedback in the comments and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new videos to the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time.